in the last lecture we had discussed about uh, certainty factors we have just briefly introduced certainty factors in this lecture we'll further deal with that we have uh, seen the different scenarios so we'll first start with the last point where we left certainty factors in the case of rule chaining now what was really attempted to be explained here is something like this that um, I have got some antecedent A pointing to some other antecedent B with some certainty say 0 0.7 alright this is equivalent to writing it as A implies B 0.7 what does it mean it means that if A is known with certainty if A is known with certainty then I will infer B with a confidence or belief of 0 0.7. So, I would say that M B of B given A is equal to 0 0.7 all right in the normal case, but we know that this A may not be known with certainty, right? There may be some uncertainty in this A itself. If the certainty factor of A given whatever evidences E be 1, in that case it is a certainty, but suppose if the certainty factor of A given some evidence E is less than 1, then obviously this 0 0.7 that I get here should be modified. Therefore, we say it is M B prime, M B prime is the measure of belief in B if A is known with certainty but A is not known with certainty. Therefore, this needs to be modified and I must have some M B of B given A, where this M B prime B given A must be modified. M B prime of B given A is the measure of belief in B given A is known with certainty and that would have been 0 0.7, but A is not known with certainty. So, this has to be modified and so we multiply this with max of 0 and certainty factor of A given some evidence E. Suppose A was known this part was 0.8. A is not known with certainty, but A is known with uh, known, not known with certainty, but A is known with a belief of 0.8. In that case, this would have been modified to this is 0.7 times max of 0 and 0.8. So, it would be 0.8. So, it would be 0.8. 6. Okay. So, let us go back to this slide. Now, it will be clear. Suppose E is the evidence that led us to believe S and the certainty factor of S given the evidence E was CFSE. So, we take the max of that and multiply MB prime HS with this. That leads us to the modified measure of belief when the rules are chained. Next, let us look at some examples, 
so that you will be in a position uh, after looking at this to compute the certainty factors by yourself. This is look at this diagram, this is the traditionally old uh, example that we had shown in the last lecture also. A is implying C with a certainty of 0.3, B is implying C with a certainty of 0.2. So, first I look at now what would be the total certainty of C. Suppose first it was only known that A is true, B is true is not yet known. So, this rule was enabled. So, A implies C has been inferred with forget about this part, forget about this part. In that case C is inferred with 0.3. <coughs> now, we get a small evidence, another evidence B and there is a rule which says if B is true then also C is true, but that is even a weaker uh, rule where this relation is strengthened with a certainty factor of 0.2. So, we have seen in our uh, formulae that if we go up in the earlier lectures, we can see that M B of H given E 1 and E 2. That means, in our case given B uh, and A we will have the measure of belief of H given A plus measure of belief of H given B times 1 minus measure of belief of H given A because it is coming twice. So, if we follow this, then we come to this, we applying this formula, we get 0.3 plus 0.2 times 0.7 that is 0.44 and none of these rules spoke against C. Therefore, measure of disbelief in C is 0. Therefore, certainty factor we know is M B minus M D. So, that will be 0.44 minus 0 is 0.44. Okay. Let us take the another uh, a little more complicated example. Let us consider two rules let us consider two rules where the first rule says if something some animal has hair then it is a mammal and this implication has got a strength of 0.9. The second rule is saying if the animal has forward bulging eyes and sharp teeth then it is also a mammal and the strength of this rule that means the strength of this implication is 0.7. So, we have got two rules and we have got some facts as well. What are these facts? Suppose from prior observations or information we have found that certainty factor of this antecedent has here is 0.8. So, we know this antecedent not for sure because might be the animal just uh, you were driving in a car and the animal just moved um, in from in front of your car and you could only have a glimpse of that and uh, you have got some information and some degree of belief in what you saw, you most likely 80 per, with 80 percent confidence you are saying that that animal that ran across had hair and had also forward eyes and uh, that was with 0.7. Now, note might be that you have uh, looked at the hair part and so you said yes, I am 80 percent confidence confident. <laughs> that the animal had here and your friend who was in the car took a glimpse of the eyes and said yes, I am 75 confident, uh, percent confidence, uh, confident 
that it had forward eyes and another friend said well uh, I am 30 percent confident that uh, it had sharp teeth. So, might be that from different sources you have got this information. So, <laughs> the database is like this now C f in has here is 0.8, C f in forward eyes is 0 0.75, C f in sharp teeth is 0.3 and I have got these rules. Note that no two factors, the rules are also not 100 percent certain, there are certainty factors with these implications and neither are these facts 100 percent certain. So, our problem is that given multiple premises, the different premises 1, 2, 3, how do I combine them into one certainty factor when I take this rule. Now, certainty factor of P 1 and P 2, P 1 or P 2, we know is max of certainty factor of P 1 and certainty factor of P 2 and certainty factor of P 1 and P 2 is mean of certainty factor of P 1 and P 2. So, certainty factor of if I consider rule R 2, the certainty factor of forward eyes and sharp teeth, this antecedent part would be the if I apply this formula, then I should take the mean of sharp teeth and forward eyes confidence. So, mean of 0 0.75 and 0 0.3 and mean of 0 0.75 and 0 0.3 is 0 0.3. Okay. So, this antecedent part of the rule R 2 is 0.3. Now, <coughs> these are the rules has here implies mammal with certain factor 0 0.9, forward eyes and sharp teeth implies mammals with certain factor 0 0.7. Now, given the premise certainty factors, now I know, now has here is a single antecedent, so its certainty factor is already known, it is 0.8. Therefore, now I know the certainty factor of all these antecedent parts, it is 0 0.8 and these two together is 0 0.3, it was 0 0.75 and 0 0.3. So, since they are ended, I have taken the mean of those. So, it is 0 0.3. Now, how do we combine with the certainty factor for the rule? The formula is that certainty factor of a hypothesis given a rule. Now, this rule is an evidence. We know that um, certainty factor of H given E is a certainty factor of the premise that is um, this part and this has to be multiplied with the certainty factor of the implication. So, for the first one, for the first one it is certainty factor of has here times certainty factor of R 1. So, the certainty factor of has here is 0 0.8 and the certainty factor of the rule is 0.9. So, that is 0.72. Okay. For the second rule, so I the first rule tells me that I uh, infer that the animal that ran through in fr uh, from a, from my uh, in front of my car ran across uh, the front of my car has is a mammal with a certainty 0 0.72 now if we look at the second rule that given r2 what is the certainty that it is a mammal then we know that the certainty factor of the antecedent part that is forward eyes and sharp teeth is 0 0.3 and the certainty factor of the rule itself is 0 0.7. So, if we multiply them it is 0 0.21. Now, we come to a point when two rules are uh, stating that it is a mammal 
one with a confidence of 0.72, another with a confidence of 0.21. Then we have got different rules with the same conclusion. Note that it is the same as here we can consider the rules to be evidences. You see my evidences are changing. Say when I had this has here, the CF in that was 0.8, then this was an evidence that was talking of the hypothesis that is mammal. Okay. Uh, let me write here mammal, that is the hypothesis. So, I combined them by multiplying, all right. So, this was 0 0.9, so these two got multiplied and I got 0 0.72, no problem with that. Now, similarly, I had another rule forward eyes and sharp teeth. So, this was my E and that was giving to my hypothesis that is mammal and this came to 0 0.3 and this was something like 0 0.7, this implication was 0 0.7, so that got multiplied and I got 0 0.21. Now, about mammal, this is again mammal, so I have got R1 and R2 both these rules are talking in favor of mammal. So, the common hypothesis H that is mammal is being supported by two rules R 1 and R 2. So, this is evidence 1 and this is evidence 2. So, the same thing can be applied I am with combining these rules is the same as looking at it as E 1 and D 2 is leading to H or both R 1 and R 2 are leading to mammal and this came up with 0.72 and this came up with uh, sorry, this should not be drawn in this way. Uh, this came with 0 0.72 and this came with 0 0.21. Now, how do I combine these two, these two rules? So, you probably have guessed by now what we should do. <coughs> so, if we take the rule R 1, then I will infer mammal with a confidence of 0.72, but the second rule which has got in itself 0.21 will be added to this, but it should be before adding it should be multiplied with 1 minus m b h e 1, the same old formula that we had done here. Okay. Uh, the same old formula that we see here. All right. So, we will Now, we, by applying this formula, we get 0 0.72 plus this 0 0.588, so it is 0 0.7788. Now, a very relevant question can be asked. If you recall uh, the, 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 the architecture of or the, the mode of working of an expert system, rule based system, there are different rules R1, R2, R3, and the inference machine will ultimately decide which rule to fire. So, this computation that we have just now shown is that we first apply R 1 and infer that uh, the animal is a mammal with a certainty of 
0.72 by applying rule R1 and we apply rule R2 after that. Okay. And then we get this figure 0 0.7788, but there is no assurance that the inference machine and the conflict resolution strategy will always follow the same order of firing the rules. What would happen if the rules are fired in a just the alternative way? R2 is fired first and we infer that the animal is a mammal with the certainty factor 0 0.21 and after that we fire rule R1. Then what would be the computation? We can try to do that and then first if rule R2 is fired, then we infer that with, uh, with a measure of belief of mammal given R2 to be 0.21. And then we fire rule R1. Then we have to combine these two and we will apply the formula that MB mammal given R1 and R2 to be MB M R2 plus MB m r 1 minus uh, times 1 minus m b m r 2, just the complementary opposite. So, here you see this is 0 0.21 plus this part is 0 0.72 times 1 minus 0 0.21 and what does it come to 0.21 plus 0.72 and this is point times 0.79 and if you multiply them it will be 0.21 plus if you do it with 0.8 for example. So, So, it will be a little less than this, all right. Uh, so, if we combine this using the same formula, we will get uh, the same thing, same value if we do it in this way, all right. Therefore, the rule of um, I think uh, what would this factor get changed to? Um, 0.79. So, point this should be 0 0.72 times 0 0.79. So, this part will add up to the same value. Okay. So, we will find it will be approximately 0 0.7788. <coughs> it will be exactly that. So, what does it mean? This means that certainty factor should be independent, the co law of combination should be independent of the order in which the rules are being fired. So, certainty factor of some hypothesis given E 1 and E 2 should be the same as certainty factor of H given E 2 and E 1. This means that the combination rule will be should be such that it should be commutative. All right. Also, another property that this combination rules should support is that it should be associative. That means, I first do E 1, E 2 and then take E 3. That means, I am combining E 1 and E 2 first and then combining with E 3 and H given that the certainty factor of H given this should be the same as if I had combined it in a different way that is H given say E 1 I have just done and later on I do say E 2 and E 3. 
it should be same. So, that is the associative property and the other one that we have discussed is the commutative property. Now, these two properties must be satisfied by the certainty factor combination rules and fortunately and not fortunately the certainty factor combination rules were designed in a way that these two properties are satisfied. That is a very important observation which uh, you should keep in mind. So, if we are given multiple premises, how do we combine them into one certain factor that we have already seen? Okay. So, the summary of certainty factor um, algebra that we have discussed till now is that cert if it is certainly true. Now, look at this. I will talk about the difference between probability and certainty factor later, but those of you know, although we will be discussing it later uh, in detail in the later part of this lecture and the subsequent lecture, we know we are probably familiar with the term conditional probability. Okay, that given an evidence E, given a particular symptom say headache, what is the probability that the patient has got migraine? All right. So, if we know for sure, in that case we can say that the probability of age given E is 1. <coughs> now, this is equivalent to in our certainty factor algebra that M B of age given E is 1. M D of age given E is 0 and therefore, the certainty factor of age given E is 1. If it be certainly false, then the, that is the probability of age given E is, uh, sorry, it should be 0, probability of age given E is 0, then M B is 0, M D is 1 and certainty factor is minus 1. Therefore, the range of certainty factor can be from 1 to minus 1, that is the range of certainty factor, whereas the range of measure of belief is from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 and um, MD is also 0 to 1, but certainty factor is from minus 1 to plus 1, that is the range. When there is lack of evidence, that is I do not know the relationship between the evidence E and H, then whatever is the probability of H, that is the thing there is no question of any conditional probability. In that case, I have got no measure of belief, no measure of disbelief and the certainty factor is 0, I cannot do anything. Combination of evidences, we have seen certainty factor of E 1 and E 2 is mean of certainty factor of E 1 and certainty factor of E 2 or disjunction is max of E 1 and E 2. Implication that is if E then H is C F H E is C F E times multiplied by C f h given E, where h, where capital E is uh, the certainty with which we know h if the small e was known with certainty. That is the example, that is the case where we have done for rule chain m b prime times the certainty factor, right, the same thing. Next, let us see. So, by now I assume that I hope that you have understood uh, the way certainty factors are computed. Next, let us look at have a revisit with the Mycene rule because Mycene first introduced certainty factors. So, let us look at the Mycene rules and see how the Mycene rules. Uh, do the same thing with certain factor. Here is a rule that we have seen earlier. If the stain of the organism is gram positive and the morphology of the organism is caucus and the growth conformation of the organism is, in, is chains, probably this rule is a little different. Earlier thing is uh, was clumps here, but here it is chains another type another rule. Then 
there is uh, a typographic mistake here. There is suggestive evidence with certainty factor 0 0.7 that the ID identity of the organism is streptococcus. The earlier rule was staphylococcus. So, this is another rule. So, we have got the certainty factor. What is my certainty factor in the evidence? This complete evidence. Suppose this is known with 0.5. The stain of organism is gram positive. That has been known from some other rule. And that has been known with 0.5. And this has been known with um, say 0.6 and this one has been known with 0.3. So, the evidence of all these conjunction will be mean of 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.3. So, it will be 0 0.3. So, it is the belief of the antecedent part. All right. Now, this entire rule is saying that this conclusion is true with 0 0.7 provided these are known for sure. These are certainly true. <coughs> Unfortunately, these have come from the stain of organism has been found through some test at some laboratory and you ha do not have 100 percent confidence in that. So, you had some 0 0.5 confidence into this. Therefore, the strength of belief in this conclusion that the identity, identity of the organism is streptococcus has to be modified. Right? It has to be modified again as certainty factor of H e, certainty factor of E times this should be multiplication of certain factor of H e. That means, if uh, these evidences were known for sure, then it will be 0 0.7, but unfortunately, these evidences are known with a certainty of 0 0.3. So, ultimately, my scene inference machine will infer that the identity of the organism is streptococcus with a confidence of 0 0.21. And if there is some other rule that is uh, for example, there is a uh, rule which is something like this. I am writing it simply. If strepto, streptococcus, uh, I do not know whether the two C's or one C's, if streptococcus, then uh, whatever x, y, z, the doctors will be able to tell you better and the confidence certainty factor of that is in 0 0.8. Now, streptococcus I have inferred from my earlier rule with a confidence of point, uh, how much was it? 2, 1 or 2, 2, something of this sort, all right, uh, 0.3, it was, it was 0 0.21. So, then x, y, z will therefore 0.8 will be 0 0.8 if this streptococcus was known with certainty, but it should be multiplied by 0 0.21 and whatever comes to this multiplication, that value will be the confidence certainty factor that will be associated with x, y, z in my scene. Okay. Now, it is time for a quiz. It is a very simple quiz and you take it down. It is very simple and you will have to compute this. Suppose, uh, we are trying to confirm some, some hypothesis H. Please note it down. The initial observation is that S 1 confirms our belief in, a, belief in H with a measure of belief 0.3. That means, there is some rule like this. S 1 implies H with certainty factor 0.3. Later on, we observe another, another test report comes from another lab and there is another rule S 2 that is confirming um, the same hypothesis H with a certainty factor 0 0.2. So, so, S 1 confirmed H with 0 0.3 and later on another 
report comes S2 confirms 8 with 0.2 and now you have got both these. So, you are asked to find the certainty factor of 8 given S1 and S2. This is a very simple quiz, but please work it out. All right, take it down and work it out. <coughs> there is a very important issue which we have not yet discussed regarding Mycene rules or uncertainty factors. Let us look into that now. And this factor is behind the success of certainty factor or you can say that it is also a limiting uh, factor of application of certainty factors that is known as independence assumption, independence assumption in my scene. Let us look at this rule, this rule. If the stain of organism is gram positive and the morphology of the organism is caucus and the growth conformation of the organism is, in, is changed, then there is suggestive evidence with a certainty of 0 0.7 that the identity of the organism is streptococcus. Now, these have been all these three antecedents have been combined into a rule because these are not independent, because these are not independent. Maybe that if it is gram positive, if it is gram positive, then being gram positive also makes the morphology uh, caucus. So, they are not independent. Since they are not independent, they have been clubbed together and the expert has combined them together with a certainty factor of 0.7. Now, if we had assumed that each of these antecedents were independent and had independent certainty factor of 0.6, all of them have got 0.6 and certainty factor algebra was applied. Now, what would be meaning by independent? Independent. That in that case that being gram positive does not affect causally. It does not, it is not the cause of uh, something being um, morphology being in chains, okay? uh, morphology being caucus. <coughs> and the morphology being caucus is cannot be a cause of, is not causally related to the, uh, the, to the growth conformation in chains. These are three independent observations. The boy is tall. The price of, uh, or let us take another example. Say, if we say the father of the boy is rich and the boy has a car, then in all, prob all probability these are causally related. But if there be uh, something like that the father of the boy is tall and the boy, is, boy has a car, then these two are two independent statements which are not causally related and I independently find the truth in each of these propositions. Okay? So, we say that two propositions are independent if they are not causally related. If they are not causally related, in that case and if we assume that each of them have got certainty factor 0 0.6, then let us see what happens and we apply certainty factor algebra. Then M B, measure of belief in H given S 1 and S 2, S 1 has got 0 0.6 and S 2 is 0 0.6, so the combined belief is 0 0.84. And if we take S3, so we are talking of this rule, this was 0 0.7, this is 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. So, when we combine these two, first two, 
then we get uh, 0.84 and when we combine the third one with it, you see it becomes 0 0.936. If you just look at it, you will find another very interesting phenomenon. You see the figures were 0 0.6, then 0 0.84 and then 0 0.936. Let us see another interesting phenomena here. The first one, they are independent, right? S1 supported H. So, that was with 0 0.6, all right? S2 supported, um, or say S1 was with 0 0.6. I got another 0 0.6. Now, you see from this 0 0.6, my belief went to 0.84, because these two together now supported H. But when I had put, I put in S3, obviously, since that is another uh, supporting evidence, that will further support this, but it went, this went up to 0.936. So, you see, as I am putting in more and more evidence, my confidence in the overall thing is going up exponentially, but is gradually going towards a saturation where ultimately it can saturate to the value 1. This is one observation that one additional evidence S2 along with S1 really can support this in favor or if it be MD in disfavor, but gradually as I put on these more and more evidences, then it tries to saturate and that is only natural. <coughs> now, it is coming to point, so it is coming to 0.936, that is the overall rule is coming to this. So, obviously, it is not telling with what the expert had said uh, that it, would, it should be 0.7. Sorry. Uh, the original rule had said that it is 0 0.7, but here if I take them independently, then it is becoming different. So, the but in real life, many of the things will not be independent. So, here comes the experts, uh, real expertise that all the independent, all the dependent causes, I am clubbing together and using my expertise, I am putting in one particular confidence factor into it, that is 0.7. Okay? So, that is, and when I do it, then, then it becomes as if E implies H, the, all these three antecedents are taken together. Um, so, the other aspect that uh, we need to look into is uh, we can see another example, all right. Where um, let us consider these three. Suppose the S, the, I am using three um, notations S, W, and R. These are three propositions. S is stating that sprinkler was used last night. Say you are maintaining a lawn and you want to keep the grass green. So, you have put in a sprinkler which sprinkles water over there. Now, if say S is sprinkler was on, it was put on last night, 
and the statement W says grass is weight this morning, today the grass is weight and R is another proposition, it rained last night. Okay. Now, if I assume that all these are independent, then and I write a rule R 1, if S that means if the sprinkler was on last night, then W, then today morning the grass will be wet. Independently, this rule is fine, there is no problem with this and uh, I have put in a confidence point 9 because I was not too sure how long the <coughs> sprinkler will be on. So, but if the sprinkler is on in the morning, the grass will be wet. Now, suppose another rule independently has been written. If the if I find the grass weight today morning, then R, then that means then I will assume that it rained last night. This rule is also okay individually when these two are seen individually. I hope you are understanding this situation. I am making a statement that if the sprinkler was on yesterday night, then today the grass will be wet and I am putting 0.9 degree of belief or certainty factor to this rule. Fine. Another rule is saying that if the grass is found wet today morning, then I will assume that with 0.8 certainty that it rained yesterday night. That is also very logical. Now, the problem comes when we combine these rules. Let us see what happens. If S, now if the rules are chained, if S then W and rule 2 is if W then R, then on chaining, then on chaining what do we find? We will find a rule if S then R and what is the certainty of that? If I go on combining M B W S it was 0.8 this rule all right, and I combine this with this rule that is M B R W will be 0.72, then what am I getting? I am getting that it rained because the spring, then we get a very strong belief that we got a rain because uh, uh, sorry R was uh, mm, it uh, rained last night. I conclude that it ra rained last night because I found with 0.8 certainty that the grass was wet. So, I have concluded that it has rained with a finite certainty while the actual reason was the sprinkler being on. So, I have when the sprinkler was on, I just looked at the grass and using my rule and assuming these two rules are fine independently, I combined them and actually the sprinkler was on, my intermediate effect was um, the grass being wet and I inferred that it rained. So, that is a problem. So, this is uh, not correct. So, that we uh, believe that, that it rained because of the sprinkler was on. So, again this is again a violation of the independence assumption. So, what is very important is in order to do this is to understand the notion of causality and independence. What is meant by causality here? We can simply uh, look at say some event E 1 causes another event E 2 maybe. Maybe another event or some uh, say E 3 is causing E 4. 
So, these are the causal links, causal links, one is causing the other, E 1 is causing E 2, all right. Although E 3 and E 2 were not causally linked. So, we must look at the scenario and if they are not causally related, we should not combine them. That is a very important consideration. Okay. So, in this case, say this the rule that if the grass is wet and the weight, weight and rain should not be combined with the sprinkler business. So, this and if they have to be combined that then this combined belief has to be given a separate certainty factor. Now, with this discussion of certainty factor, next we will move to uh, another very popular way of inferencing that is known as, uh, that is a, actually the probabilistic reasoning. Now, certainty factor is not strictly following the formal rigor of probability. So, in the next lecture, uh, we will be talking about probability and uncertainty and we will once again see how we deal with uncertainty and uh, then we will see how the theory of probability can be applied to deal with uncertainty. We will have a brief look at that. Thank you. In the earlier lecture, we had discussed uh, about reasoning with uncertainty and there we discussed about uh, certainty factor algebra. And we also sh had shown that uh, how mycin uses certainty factors in order to deal with uncertain reasoning. A very powerful tool for reasoning with uncertainty is probability theory and probabilistic techniques. That is also known in another term that is called statistical reasoning. Many of you might be familiar with probability and uh, we will have a brief recapitulation of the basics of probability theory today and then from there we will proceed towards uh, reasoning using probabilities of events. Just to give you an idea, you have seen in the earlier lecture that we are having some confidence associated with some rules. However, these confidences or the certainty factors or the measure of beliefs or disbeliefs were being attributed by subjective uh, decisions taken by the experts. However, if we had actually conducted a number of experiments, say a particular rule A implies B, out of 1000 times when A is true, how many times did B become true? If we could make a thorough experiment about this and based on the frequency of the times when A implies B really holds, we could have really given a much more realistic factor, realistic value, a realistic, more realistic strength of belief to the rule. So, that is the basic idea of probability theory, probabilistic reasoning. However, there are uh, associated problems and complications as well. However, before going towards uh, the probabilistic reasoning, uh, we will be discussing today about probability and un uh, uncertainty, but before going into that, uh, we will have a relook on the issue of uncertainty in decision making proper. Default means assuming something 
when nothing is known to the contrary. So, this is uh, if you recall in the passing we had said uh, I had mentioned about abductive reasoning you know uh, deductive reasoning has been discussed. We have also mentioned with mentioned about abductive reasoning. There is another very interesting type of reasoning called default reasoning. Now, what does this default mean? Default means say assume something x to be true when nothing is known to the contrary all right <coughs> that means i do not know i do not have any evidence no evidence is right now available is right now available that contradicts x that says not x there is nothing such <coughs> okay so when nothing is known to the contrary then assume something that is called default reasoning let me give an example say Fido is a dog and you know dogs have four legs all right therefore i can infer that Fido has four legs. Now, if I know that Fido met with an accident and had one leg amputed, then obviously this reasoning will fail. Now, I, I, I am feeling tempted to ask you what is this sort of reasoning? Fido is a dog, so I can 